Hi, I'm Bea. My channel is about mixed media, art, journaling, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. Hey all! Welcome to my new project about altering a book. So, as I said in the last Monday video, I want to make an altered book. This is one from, I think, about 1942. I did buy it at the thrift store and I already started cutting out pages. I'm going to show you more, but first I want to show you what I'm going to use with it. So, I have this very inexpensive frame, which I took apart already. I did take out the little hinges here because that would be a little bit disturbing when I want to glue it really flat on here. That's one thing I'm gonna know. So go look for a frame which fits your book and fits your elements we wanna put in. I'm gonna show you how I make those pieces. Um, that, by the way, is with embossing ink. So I also gonna use on the covers some of those uh, chipboard pieces. Team is nature. I actually, as I told you, I have a whole stash of butterflies. Uh, that's a bee, a lace, uh, magazine pages. Uh, all kind of uh, like um, stickers from catalogs, uh, napkins. I also have from Graphic 45 the Nature Sketchbook. And what I have here that's a leftover from the Canvas Corp brand, the Mixed Media Origins by Tattered Angel. And it, I don't know whether you can really read it, but it says Naturalist's Library and Tomology, and tomology. I don't know how to spell it, how to say it in English. You get the idea. Entomology in German. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that would be really um, nice for that because it's going to be all about insects, which entomology means insects, science of insects, or something like that. Anyway, I'm going to cover the book completely, and I have. This tissue paper, which I'm going to use as a background, I'm going to cover up her. I'm sorry, Avery. I'm going to cover you up and then I'm going to glue things together. I'm going to use modeling paste probably also. So with no further ado, just let's start with making those elements, those uh, embossing powder elements. So what you need for this kind of full petrified insects, that's what I call them. Uh, you're gonna need some ultra thick embossing powder. I happen to have those that from Ranger. Uh, it is clear, so I want to, to tint it a little bit. Um, I did try first with some blues, as you can see here. Uh, those are the blues, but I didn't like it so, so much. I really like the look of this amber-like quality, so so I went with some gold, so that's what you need. You need a container and I use those aluminum tin foil thingies from baking. Depending on what kind of look you are going for, either you go with the organic shape or you go with like a, a circle or this is like a fancy square rectangle. You're going to need stamps and for stamps I recommend get some that has really deep impressions, that give deep impressions, which give you a crisper uh, pattern, a crisper image than... I did try this one, it's nice as a stamp for stamping with ink, but it didn't come out at all and I just did remelt it, more on that later. So that's too flat, that's not enough. Uh, impression. So I actually liked the most this one. This one was kind of okay too, but I think this one is the best one. That's why I did play along mostly with this stem. So go look for a 
stamp with deep impression and it has to be a rubber stamp. Don't use any other stamps because there is heat involved and rubber stamps can handle heat because the process of the process how they are made. So don't go and use your polymer stamps. That wouldn't work. It would be a mess. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with this stamp. We're gonna need uh, an ink if we want some black on it. Uh, I'm gonna use the Stason Jet black. Uh, uh, I'm actually gonna try it now with the Stason, uh, not with the Stason, with the Distress ink. So hold on a second, just to see if it works with the Distress ink too. I usually Stason is my go-to ink because yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, that's what it we need. Some sort of ink. These tins. And we're gonna form them into a sort of a container for the powders. And we need a piece to hold on. And I don't want to burn my finger. So I'm gonna need, use a cloth pin. You could probably also use like uh, pliers or something like that. So I make it really nice and flat here. So I have a good grab and still a flat area here. And then we need a sort of a spout to pour it. That's what we have here. Okay. I use approximately for, I start usually with like two spoonful, not quite, maybe a little bit more. Some gold, you don't need a lot. And don't ask me what brand this is, this is just I have a whole package, but I have no idea what brand it is. I hope maybe it's the vendors, but I'm not sure about that. But any gold you like would work. And I find it easier if it is a fine gold. Uh, it's a fine embossing because you can mix it better. But if you have a coarse one, it just takes a little bit more time. Anyway, and it really doesn't need a lot. Now, uh, I'm going to take off my watch so we can see how long it actually takes. Put that a bit aside. Let's make some more. As you can see, I work on one of those uh, heat resistant stones. Uh, it's just the way I like to work. So I'm sure I can do everything without harming. It's just my thing. You're also going to need a piece of uh, heat resistant, either a craft sheet or, or that's it's like a Teflon piece, so it's heat resistant. I don't pour on the stone, it's going to stick there. It must be something where you can lift up, lift up your pieces afterwards easily. Okay, and I usually go, you, you have to start from underneath, otherwise you're going to spill all the powders everywhere. That's not what we want. So I'm going to start underneath, but I don't make you watch all the time. I'm go, going to stop the video and I come back when it is sort of already melted, still some grainy bits and show you how you finish it. Because uh, it goes quickest when you come from above, but you don't want to spill it, so you have to start from underneath. Okay, let's start. And I'm gonna mute the, the sound. <laughs> I'm about an inch, maybe three quarter of an inch uh, from the tin.
So as long as you still can shake the powder, I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but I still can shake around the powder, so I still have to go from underneath. Uh, you can see now those cracks in the powder, it means it's um, getting there where I can go for, come from above. So. Now the whole thing has to be very runny when we work, uh, when we pour it onto the non-stick surface and um, at the same time we have to be prepared so that uh, we have to work quick, we have to stamp with our stamp and we have to make the impression so that we can easily break the non-needed parts. So. I usually add some ink and then I leave it on the pad until I'm ready to pick it up to do the impression. I really want to have a real good black coverage if I can help. And I'm going to use that. And as soon as I have finished that, I'm going to reheat it. I have now to reheat it much longer than you because I was talking and I'm explaining to you. You probably don't have to reheat it that long. And then I'm going to pour it in lines until I have approximately that size. Quick grab my stamp, put it in, if I can help, centered. <laughs> and then as next step I go in with my cookie cutter. I'm gonna do that now in one movement so that uh, the embossing powder doesn't cool off and doesn't flow. It really has to be runny like water. It really has to be runny. Okay, now it has to cool off a bit before you can handle it, but it still has to be a little bit warm to use the scissor and to take off the... And there's the thing I don't like here. There was a little bump there which I didn't like and there's actually another one. Because we have to make sure that we can put it under our frame so we can't have bumps. Okay. 
and it's still warm so I can tear off the edges sometimes and sometimes I need a scissor for the last bits like here okay let's see how it worked with distress ink I'm gonna zoom in here we go yeah it does work with distress ink too it's still soft so I still can cut off pieces I don't like and you can reuse those things you know you just add a little bit more for another one do I want that here Just did um, melt a little bit the hard edges. Okay, and it's still warm. That's what it's gonna look like. So my next step is gonna be uh, I wanna thin out the book a little bit, and I have already started, as you can see. I usually start from the back. Don't know why, just the way I do. Um, so when you are looking for a book, you are looking for a book that is uh, that has bound signatures. That means you can see somewhere the threads here. For those who haven't watched my last video, Monday video, so there are some threads here. Hope you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. So you're looking for that. I uh, find those tend less to fall apart. Uh, for those who follow me a, a little bit, in, they know that I did uh, make an altered photo album which was purely glued and it's starting to, to come, come apart which I don't really like but hey, I, it was a try. <laughs> anyway, so, so that's why I, wa I want to make sure that I have um, a sewn book. So. Here is the last time I have, no, here is the last one, here is the last one. Okay, I have done more than what I thought. So I go backwards until I find threads again, which are here, I think, yep. Then I'm gonna, oh yeah, I remember now, I did already pull out so my next step gonna be, and that's I like this uh, small mat, so I don't cut into the whole book. It's a self-healing mat, and I simply cut another two pages. So. threads again so I'm gonna pull out this part and don't throw, throw out those pages we're probably gonna use them and if there are some leftovers I use either uh, a tweezer or if it doesn't work with a tweezer you also can go with uh, pliers just want to get rid of those pieces here. There's another one here. Just want to make room for adding more stuff into the book. Okay. Again. So from each signature I cut out 
two pages and I tear out uh, a double page. So now we have room to add our things. I'm going to do a second part where we do the actual cover. I think that's enough for one video. I don't want you keep for hours on YouTube. Also, YouTube would like it. <laughs> it's okay. Take care. See you later.